You know, I've been saying I told you so so much lately. I am finally relieved to have a break from this pattern today announcing how wrong I was about something. Actually, myself and my friend Jeff Dice of the Mises Institute, who had a great conversation about the Chaz Chop of Seattle uh, just last week, we both predicted that like the Occupy movement, this thing would at least last a few months. Now, we might still be proven right. There's an off chance that there's some continuation of this thing that lasts a few more months as a meaningful autonomous zone. But today is a rather sad day in the history of freedom for humanity. Not that big a deal. I, I mean, there, there are much sadder days than Chaz Chop getting shut down, cleared out by police. The headline from USA Today, Seattle police are clearing the chop zone and making arrests after mayor orders protesters to leave. Pro uh, police in Seattle converged on the city's protest zone early Wednesday, making arrests and sweeping through streets that demonstrators had occupied for weeks to protest police brutality and systemic racism. You know, when I first hear about this, it, like early, I saw this, I, saw, I started watching this this morning. Someone sent me the live feed. And it's not that exciting. I mean, you see pictures of, of the barricades and, and protesters with signs and, you know, rainbows painted on crosswalks and police in full right gear standing around, you know, trying to keep things as chill as possible. There were some fireworks that went off, scared people for a while. And I think, well, they didn't do an early morning raid. I mean, what, remember that the ideal time for SWAT raids is 4 a.m., right? People are at their, their deepest sleep on average altogether, 4 a.m. But, you know, for hippie socialist protesters at Chaz Chop, they might be on a slightly delayed schedule so the cops don't have to go in under cover of darkness and make it look like it's a, a brutal raid. They can go in at 7 a.m. Pacific time. And uh, it's it, a lot of people there are still sleeping. <laughs> and it has the same equivalent effect of, I think, getting people while they're groggy. Mayor Jenny Durkin issued an executive order for protesters to vacate the area and police that they were in the area Wednesday to enforce the order. The decision to clear the area, first known as the Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone or CHAZ, and then the Capitol Hill Occupied Protest. Wasn't it organized protest? Is it occupied? Which was the official name? I don't know. It doesn't matter at this point. Really bad branding switch. I mean, CHAZ, not only is it, does it sound cool, I mean, it's, it's, it's an old Chaz. Like, people used to call people named Charlie. Like, this is a classic American nickname for Charlie. My dad's name. My middle name, Charlie. Chaz. I wouldn't mind being called Chaz. It's a cool-sounding name. And it's so uncommon that it's very distinct. You can name a project the Chaz. And it has the location and the, the, the concept of a Capitol Hill autonomous zone. And it really captures the beauty of that. Then they, they screwed up with the name change up. But who did that? Like, what, I I Something like this, there's 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 one major weakness, as with any such uh, enterprise, as with government and and many other things. You have a tragedy of the commons, right? If it's if it's truly open to everyone, well, then it's open to to infiltrators. It's open to saboteurs. You know, if if you are the powers that, if you're just say you're the Seattle, I mean, even just the Seattle city government, what's the budget? of the Seattle city government. It's a lot, whatever it is, it's enough that they can afford to just send in, you know, swarms of, of riot cops, fully geared up, militarized police. You know, Seattle, big city, a lot of money. You think they can't afford a few dozen police to go undercover and infiltrate this thing and, you know, just sway the vote? Like, how easy is it? Like what? What is the what is the base? How many people? We never really got into this, but how many people, you know, make up the Chaz Chop project as a whole? You can look at the crowds of protesters that kick things off, and and they were in the thousands, right? I mean, was it was it? I, I assume at some point in Seattle, it probably was tens of thousands, right, of, of protesters overall, you know, coming out for BLM and and, and George Floyd, Breonna Taylor. Um, 
as, as part of the police brutality protest. Like, and, and, and there were at least thousands there when this started and they pushed out the police, right? Very exciting. And then how many were really, how many stayed? How many really were active with that project? I mean, it's sort of a spontaneous collective action. And that's part of what makes it beautiful and part of what makes it tragic and, and weak and vulnerable to this kind of failure. And, and this is, you know, I mean, Jeff Dice and I, we knew that this was happening. Like we, we were like, yeah, of course, there's going to be infiltration. But in a way, I'm, I'm kind of I'm discouraged that it, it fell apart so fast. You know, I, I talk a lot about COINTELPRO. If you don't know what COINTELPRO is, the counterintelligence program of the FBI responsible for a lot of the assassinations by cop of activists in the 60s and 70s. You know, go go look up at least read the Wikipedia page for COINTELPRO. If you don't think there were undercover agents at the Chaz, you're insane. So, you know, if you get down to like, what's the core group of people who actually go to the meetings? And I think about the ones that I saw at Zuccotti Park in, in New York with Occupy and in uh, in Washington, D.C., where, where I did the first you know major viral video covering uh, that back in, gee, 2011. Was it 2011 that was right in, in D.C.? And there's, there, you know, they have these uh, sort of open source community meetings and, you know, they do the little finger signs and call and repeat. And you remember that call, the really annoying call and repeat thing from Occupy? Well, it, it, it's sort of like, how do you go if, if you want to subvert or control a mob like that? I, mean, and I hate to call it a mob because it's not. It's a spontaneous collective action of people doing something really cool and declaring an autonomous zone, saying we're, we're separate from the United States here. Like, that's awesome. The problem, as, as Jeff and, and I were, were very quick to point out, is that there's no legitimate real property claim to what they're taking and separating. Now, uh, if you accept the blocking, as in Walter Block argument, that, you know, anything that's government property has been stolen from people and, and is essentially, a, you know, as, as the same as unclaimed property that they go in and claim it. Or as taxpayers, you know, they say, hey, we're Seattle city taxpayers. This is our share of the, 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 the public property and we're taking our share. And, you know, again, if they were doing it that way, a more thoughtful process might have been a little bit more appropriate than uh, the, the spontaneity of this, which is still beautiful and yet tragic. So how easy is it to have a bunch of infiltrators go in and, and get the name changed? You know, could you have a like could you if you had a dozen clever undercover cops and they went to these meetings where, you know, and, and I think about how many people if there's if there's tens of thousands starting the protest and then thousands protesting there specifically for this, and then probably a few hundred people who, who really were the heart of the Chaz Chop community, and of that, maybe a hundred who regularly went to the official community meetings there and at any given meeting you know half of those and how easy is it in a meeting like that to make it a real pain in the butt for everybody to just be a spoiler and ask dumb questions to you know to manipulate that conversation to then steer it towards hey we can't really be the autonomous zone we want this thing to last you know so we're gonna we're gonna kind of back off that autonomy part of our declaration here we're just going to be in organized protest and ask the city to respect our protest space and then they do that and then you take the wind out of the sails and then the outside concentric circles now that the several hundred who make up that community and and it's probably more like several thousand there's probably another few thousand that are you know satellite members of the community who still live outside of it who didn't come and pitch tents don't really go to meetings regularly, but they'll they will they will come in and they'll give food, they'll hang out for events, they'll they'll stand there like this as as white people guarding the black only space, and you're like, oh my god, yeah, it's okay, fine. So then you change the name to Chop, and all those people go, what the frick just happened? I'm here for an autonomous zone, and now this ah uh, just a protest again. All right, well we're out of here, right? And then with the violence, how easy is it to infiltrate it, it, with, when Antifa is a thing? And I, I don't even know if Antifa, like, 
I, I mean, I wonder, I really like how much, like, yeah, people say, no, they're real meetings. Look, Veritas, Project Veritas, they, they infiltrated an Antifa meeting and they have video evidence of them saying that they're, they're going to use violence for this and that. And they, they want to get away. Okay, fine. Maybe the ones saying that in the video are undercover agents. Like, oh, and, and, and you know, the, the drivers of Antifa are, are really undercover. And then there's a few gullible, dumb teenagers, you know, who get sucked in. And if you have an undercover cop who is, you know, at least a functioning adult to, to, a, to, to the most, you know, purposes, uh, you know, is strong and fit and healthy. And goes, this is what we're doing. And they're confident in their lies and their propaganda and go, okay, yes, this is, we're going to be Antifa now. And then once that's a thing, anybody can infiltrate Antifa in public at events. I dress up in black, all black, head to toe, put on a mask. Nobody knows who you are. You know, we saw the, the protesters there, you know, beating up. And I don't want to say beating up, because it was, it was a bit, it's a bit of an but mobbing the Christian pastor who came out or preacher, street preacher who was out there. You know, uh, you know, asking people to turn to Christianity and they, they, they had a gay guy go up and, and kiss him. You know, I mean, it was like it was definitely an assault. It's definitely wrong. Like, you know, not, 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 not the worst of assaults. Because apparently there was a shooting there, too. But if you want to discredit this, all you have to do is infiltrate. How many people are against this? Does the federal government support the Chaz? Does the federal government say, yeah, let's just lose some territory. You want to be independent? By the way, another story we're going to get to today is that there are a record number of Americans now looking to renounce their citizenship. Why show them the way to do it or a way? Why make it viable to do it this way? Obviously, with what we're doing here at the Garden of Freedom and Gardenia taking our time doing it over a year, starting the process this Independence Day. Wow, that's that's Saturday. Yeah. Saturday is Independence Day? We're going to do a special episode of Adam versus the Man on, on Independence Day just to talk about uh, about declaring our sovereignty here for Gardenia. So uh, stay tuned, or maybe maybe we'll just make the declaration. Mean, I'll just make a video by myself and post it. Although that would be fun to do with with, with comments and, and questions and all that. If you didn't catch it, CJ did a great job grilling me the other day in the post show for patrons only about our plans here. So at least. All right, so, okay, back to the story from USA Today. The decision to clear the area, first name is Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone, or Chaz, and then the Capitol Hill Occupied Protester Top comes after a string of violence in the area. At least two fatal shootings occurred in the Chop in recent weeks, and police say other shootings, robberies, and violence have occurred since protesters first took over the area after police abandoned their east precinct nearby. Now, the narrative of this is so twisted from reality, it's, it's disgusting. Like, okay. Uh, there was some violence, so we need to go get people out of there where they're where they're living. I mean, it, it, I would certainly say that if you are part of this organized protest and you're camping in a public park, you absolutely have a right to be there to homestead that, to occupy that. And if they're coming in and saying no, you don't, because there's been violence in the area, that's like me going to your home and saying, "I'm sorry, I have to evict you from your home." Because your neighbors got in an argument yesterday. There's been there's been a little violence in the. There's been some. Uh, well, there's been conflict. It it might escalate, to, but there's been the potential for violence in the area now. So we have to remove you from your home. Now, wait a second. Look at Chicago. Was, wasn't there like a, like something like three dozen shootings, fatal shootings in Chicago last weekend? You don't see the police going. Well, we got to clear out these neighborhoods. Got to get everybody. No, why? they're going after this because it's the autonomous zone because they don't want the police there. That's the difference. So as Seattle Police Chief Carmen Best said, she supports peaceful protests, but quote, enough is enough. The chop has become lawless and brutal. What about the rest of the country? <laughs> like, really? Now, is, is America lawless and brutal? Like, and we go, well, Chicago certainly is. And I hate to just go back to that one data point again. But no, you look at the entire country now. We're, we're in martial law. If law is, is a good thing, it has to be based on respect for individual rights, natural law, right? By that standard, the 
flurry of laws and regulations and emergency orders would say that, yes, we, we're in a lawless country right now. You know, we're, we're in some places, we, we have had temporary pockets of full-on martial law around protests when cops have locked down neighborhoods. Uh, in, in a way, just with the coronavirus, I mean, the virus which shall not be named because we don't want to trigger YouTube to censor us for discussing controversial topics or getting flagged for misinformation. The, uh, the virus that's less deadly than trying to spend a counterfeit $20 bill in Minneapolis. Let's just, let's just refer to it as that. Uh, you know, where police right now don't follow the regulations from the governments that pay them and give, the, give them authority. And they're able to enforce them against other people and use brutality. We saw the story yesterday that uh, a, a sheriff just shoved a, a shopper up against the wall in a store because she didn't have a mask on. So, no, like, this is more government nonsense, for lawless and brutal. You want to talk about the drug war, even before Corona? Like, did you say that just because of police brutality and the drug war that America is lawless and brutal? Yeah. Yeah, you could. Uh, lawless and, and lawless as in, like, is there no law? And, and is it, and it, obviously, when, when you're talking about in these terms, illegitimate laws written on paper just flurry of law after law after law like that doesn't make a country more lawful it's the actual practice and implementation of law that i would say is a, is a country lawless and is it lawless no i mean there's a general respect in in the population for self-ownership for our fellow americans but not from government as far as government is concerned we have a lawless government we have a government that uh it, it has has no respect for self-ownership has no respect for natural law and is more than happy to violate your rights to maintain its power with brutality. That's always been the case here. Seattle police said on Twitter that it had made at least 23 arrests and officers were responding to the area with additional protective gear as they believe suspects in recent crimes may be in the area and others may be armed. Officers tore down fences, cleared trash, and poked around bushes in the chop on Wednesday. Most protesters had left several hours after police began clearing the area around 5 a.m. So they did go in at raid time. The videos I was seeing was after sunrise. 5 a.m. they started. So th I guess the cops just didn't want to get up too early. But no, that was it. They did, they did a raid. Um, I did hear on one of the live streams that they, they threw a flashbang at one point to clear people, which is pretty bad. Uh, this art, the story says a loud bang was heard about 6.15 a.m., followed by a cloud of smoke, though there were no clear signs of clashes between police and protesters. So that could have been fireworks. We did hear reports of fireworks. We did hear reports of a flash bang grenade from police. The occupation of the several block area in Seattle's Capitol Hill neighborhood began in early June following several tense nights of protest outside the police precinct. Seattle, like many other cities around the United States, saw large demonstrations immediately following the death of George Floyd in Minneapolis. Police removed their barricades from the precinct and abandoned the building after officers used tear gas on demonstrators despite the mayor issuing a ban on the chemical irritant. Once police left, protesters moved the barricades, blocked off several blocks, and declared the area a police-free autonomous zone. For days, the area saw people openly discussing issues of racism and systemic inequality. People gave speeches, painted murals, and handed out snacks, and community garden was set up at a park in the area too. Durkin initially defended the protest society from attacks by President Donald Trump who called the demonstrators domestic terrorists and demanded the city clear the area. However, Durkin and the city's police soon became critical of the area too and asked people to leave following the violence. Durkin said last week the city would start trying to dismantle the chop as nearby businesses and property owners filed a federal lawsuit against the city last Wednesday. The suit claims Officials have been too tolerant of those who created the zone and that officials have deprived property owners of their property rights by allowing the zone to continue existing. So as Jeff and I got into this, one of the problems, one of the fundamental conceptual problems with the Chaz Chop is the issue of private property being uh, not respected within that area. Although, 
you know, a, a lot of those people might say, you know, and, and, and the socialists here, I hate to say it, you know, they do have a case that libertarians need to be able to address, to refute, and should pay more attention to, because when they talk about property is illegitimate, we should acknowledge that in some cases they are correct when that property is the product of theft, right? When it's from government favors, things like that. But that doesn't disqualify uh, the core beauty of the project. And I think Jeff and I still maintained our positions where, you know, he's barely against it and sees a lot of positivity and talks about that. I'm barely for it. And so, you know, but I see a lot of negativity and have to really, you know, acknowledge and, and, and in order to say, well, I support this, but I don't support, I have to give all these copies, but I'm not a socialist, but I'm not a communist. I don't support that, but I support people declaring their independence. I support localization. I support people having new forms of government and experimenting in ways that show us the way forward to freedom. And there were so many people who got this wrong, who looked at this story like, well, it's socialists doing it, therefore it must be wrong. And it's like, well, you can't praise someone. Like, how how narrow is your worldview and your uh, approach to your fellow human beings that you cannot praise someone for doing the right thing because you have ideological differences with them. And so there are a lot of logical fallacies and collectivization within this uh, you know, critique of Chaz Chop. And I was so disappointed today to see that Joe Rogan, my old friend, is that, that he is jumping on this too with this intellectual nonsense, this, this logical fallacy. So we go to the Washington Times for Joe Rogan mocks the idea of equating Chop Chaz with progress, they beat the F blank blank out of people. I love the photo in this. It's one of the protesters saying, we don't negotiate with terrorists, which was a slogan from the Bush administration when they said, we don't, we don't negotiate with terrorists. Well, the government of the United States is run by terrorists. They want you to be afraid. So anyway, beautiful sign. Joe Rogan says the protesters inside Seattle's shop zone are like stubborn children who pretend to know how to tie their shoes when they can't. The podcasting giant recently sat down with Muay Thai kickboxer and mixed martial artist Joe Schilling when the subject turned to CHOP, also referred to as the Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone. Mr. Rogan and his guests were stunned that protesters' lack of self-awareness and city officials who have allowed the illegal power grab to go on for weeks. As Mr. Rogan said, they're doing exactly the same thing they get mad at when they think about a country. They put up walls, they have borders, they have police and enforcement. They beat the frick out of people. There's been murders inside. It's not all kumbaya, you know. It's like you just made a, a crappy, a, a essier, smaller version of a city, but it's got borders. A regular city, you can just drive into Albuquerque. They, they let you in. Chaz is like, F you, we got border walls. Now, this is, I mean, if there, if there wasn't a bigger sign that Rogan is completely sold out, I, I think he's destroying his own credibility with this kind of intellectual fallacy that he's trying to apply here. First of all, they, they're doing the exact same thing they get mad at when they think about a country. There's so much wrong with this statement, Mr. Rogan. I don't know where you get off on this. This is crazy. They, they. They are doing exactly the same thing. So you're saying the people who put up the barriers in the protest zone, you know their politics, you know them, because it wasn't like all liberals did this and got behind this. And this is like, well, you're contradicting yourself because you get mad. When, well, this is a different situation, like, you know, apples and oranges. Even if they were, even, even if Rogan's premise is true here, that all of these people here are, mad about border walls well you don't know maybe they like city walls and by the way but there's there's something else about this here they put up walls they have borders they have police and enforcement okay so you can't just drive into the area regular city you can just drive they're like no they didn't keep people out except police and vehicles like did you not joe rogan just has his like is so off on the facts on this like basic facts mr rogan Hello, if you're going to say they have a wall, they're keeping people out. Well, what, why don't you go and like actually look at what you're talking about before you go run off your mouth about it? Like, 
And I wonder, Mr. Rogan, are, are you, is this really your position? Like you used to care about freedom, you used to celebrate rebellion. You used to be anti-authority. Now you're like, yeah, those punks should just get in line and, and, and bow down to the central authority like the rest of us tax slaves. You know, Joe Rogan used to be a rebel. You know, his audience used to appreciate that, yeah, Joe Rogan was bucking the norm. And, the, and now he's like, did, did he sell out? What's the manipulation here? What's going And I, I don't want, you know, Joe, I want to, I want to allow for the possibility that maybe you've been misinformed. Maybe someone just, you didn't do your research on this one. Like, that's okay. Also, maybe, although it's not okay, because even if you didn't do your research, you're still jumping to all these logical fallacies. But, you know, maybe, maybe some, maybe Joe Rogan's got a gun to his head. Honestly, like if you get that big, I mean, it's just like, you know, anybody else the government wants to control in media, if you, if you don't, you know, if they can't stop you from getting big, then they're, they're just going to, you know, bully you into submission. So again, they put up walls. Yeah. They have borders. Yeah, absolutely. What's, well, what's wrong with that? Are you, you're, are you against them like changing their mind now? They have police and enforcement. Well, yeah. Well, they enforce what they think is is, is right in, in the use of force, and they have a different zone. Now, they beat the F out of people. Who's they? Did, did like, now, uh, there were some ugly incidents in the Chaz. I'm not, like, trying to deny that. But was there ever an incident where everybody collectively, you could say, well, this really represents Chaz. This is everybody. They went and just started, like, beating people up? No, of course not. So would you say, would you say like this is there were more beatings and murders in America as a country than there were in Chaz as a country during this time. There's been murders inside, he says. There, there were more murders in Chicago. You don't see Joe Rogan like just ripping on Chicago. So the host then pivoted to officials who turn a blind eye to violence and dysfunctional behavior inside CHOP due to the idea that left-wing ideas are always a sign of progress. Now, ab about this collectivization, Joe, I mean, this would be like me saying, well, you know, podcasters, they're so dumb. I mean, look, most podcasters only have, you know, a handful of listeners, and they say retarded things all the time. And they're, th by the way, this is me in, in a fake voice. I don't use the R word that way myself, right? Yeah, uh, you know, but all podcasters are stupid, money grubbing, sponsorship, you know, sellouts for Amazon, special link back, blah, blah, blah. Really? I mean, I, obviously, I don't have to, I don't have any good prepared dumb jokes about podcasters. <laughs> I mean, like, it's, I think the point is clear. Like, you're, Joe, you're going to collectivize everybody in the chop, you're going to collectivize all liberals. I mean, Joe Rogan, you, you endorse Bernie Sanders. I'm, I'm pretty sure that makes you a liberal by most people's definition. I thought you'd be supporting these on a deeper level. I mean, it, Joe Rogan endorsed the Democrat Socialist for president. Now, I know it wasn't a formal endorsement. It was, it was uh, the way he talked about him on his show, and he interviewed him. And uh, he has yet to interview... Uh, the libertarian nominee for president, Joe Jorgensen. I'd love to see that, Joe. If you if 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 you want to show that you have any kind of integrity, still, I, I think you'll interview Joe Jorgensen. So back to Rogan. Quote: You can go to San Francisco. You can just drive in. They're LARPing. It's live action role playing. So you're just gonna you're gonna make fun of them. Oh, and 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 they, they just, there's plenty of things they deserve to be made fun of. But again, it's like you can go just go to San Francisco. Actually. Look at America's most liberal city. Like, look at New York. Can you drive into Manhattan without giving the government money? Is there a single way into the island of Manhattan without paying a toll? And having your license plate scanned and your vehicle photographed? No, I don't think so. Is, 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 uh, New York, America's most liberal city. I mean, it is home to the socialist Donald Trump. So I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, that if, if there were other cities like that too. You can't just drive in. I mean, even San Francisco, you pay 
Actually, I know for a fact that if you come into San Francisco from the north, at least, you come across the Golden Gate Bridge, you're going to pay a toll. You come in from the east on the Bay Bridge, you're going to pay a toll. If you come in up the peninsula, then, okay, maybe maybe there's a way you can not pay a toll. But I think you still pay, well, I mean, maybe not to get into the city specifically, but you pay gas taxes. You pay all sorts of things for access to the city. There's a, there's a back to Rogan quote. There's a thing that happens when a lot of these protesters get equated with progress, right? Whether it's Antifa or any real Marxist left wing progressive socialist movement, they have good intentions, right? And they get lumped in with the idea of progress. So people let them get away with stuff. Oh, it's progress. It's going to work out. It's going to work out. But they don't have a real plan. These folks don't have a long term plan. Okay, Mr. Rogan, you want to talk about any real Marxist left-wing progressive socialist movement, let's talk about you, Bernie bro, Joe Rogan. Okay, you have good intentions. And you get lumped in with the idea of progress. Oh, it's progress, it's gonna work. You, but you don't have a plan either. Bernie Sanders' plan, really? What's your plan for when America starts looking like Cuba? because we went down that path with Bernie Sanders. Oh, you don't, these folks don't have a long-term plan. You don't have a long-term plan either, Joe. I mean, maybe your plan is keep doing your podcast, keep making fun of people, you know, protesters. Mr. Rogan likened CHOP activists to confused children who defiantly tell their parents they don't want help tying shoes. When Seattle gave them this quote, when Seattle gave them that, it was probably the most brilliant move ever. Like, okay, oh, you think you can do better? Why don't you go ahead? They, they didn't, that wasn't a move. They, they really were forced out. Like they, the, the protesters really applied enough pressure that it was not viable for police to stay there in that third precinct building. Like they could have, I get it. They could have applied more force, but it would have been way uglier than they were willing to, to deal with. So it wasn't, okay, let's see what you can do. Because if that was the case, what they would do, and, and I totally support this other option. They would say, if the city went to the protesters and say, hey guys, we respect you having an autonomous zone, but not here. We will give you this land. We will designate this land that's, that's undeveloped, that's on the edge of the city or whatever. We will we will say that you can claim this as a sovereign zone, as an autonomous zone. So now you have no excuse for staying here and messing with this private property. So that would so again, you know, Joe Rogan, I think he has his facts wrong. Like why? <laughs> Seattle Mayor Jenny Durkin has been lampooned by critics for not dismantling CHOP when it sprang up during Black Lives Matter protests earlier this month. They experienced four shootings in nine days. Again, way less than Chicago. And you know what? Probably about, probably not that much more than average for Seattle anyway, right? Four shootings in nine days. Okay. There were multiple people. So here's the quote again. Back to, to uh, Seattle Police Department Chief Carmen Best uh, on Monday. There are multiple people who are being injured and hurt, and we need to do something about it. It is absolutely irresponsible for this to continue. This is not an acceptable situation. So just in conclusion here, I'm, I'm really disappointed with Joe Rogan as a, you know, at least a supporter of democratic socialists, if not democratic socialism in, in, itself. I, I don't know. You know, Joe, I, I would think you would stand with your fellow lefties here. You know, what happened to unity among people standing up against unjust authority? You know, if we don't hang together, we'll all hang separately. I'm a libertarian saying I support people declaring their autonomy, even if I disagree with their ideology. You know, and I'll make fun of them for stuff they need to be made fun of. But you just sit back and, and repeat lies? Really? Without checking your fact? You're like, and I'm critical of lots of people, but I'm very careful before I'm critical of people to check the facts. And, and and if I get them wrong, or if I find out later that I missed something, I correct myself. And you know, I really hope that you, Mr. Rogan, will correct yourself on this and really stand up for everybody who is fighting against unjust authority, because that was at least what I used to appreciate the most about the Joe Rogan experience. And it's been really sad to see that go over the last, few years.